following podcast has adult themes and some strong language. Welcome to episode 13 of season 3 of Excuse the Jess. 13. And lucky for some, mainly me. This week's title is Fel Arach. It occurred to me that I hadn't used a Welsh title and it might be nice for the 22.3% of the population in Wales that speak Welsh. Well, according to the Welsh Government, as part of the 2021 census. Fel Arach, roughly translated, means alternatively or otherwise. It's vaguely fitting for the episode, which is starting now. The night of the two-hour session with Niles and his therapist, I gave myself 24 hours to make a decision about our relationship. I lay there, staring at the ceiling. I'm an insomniac at the best of times, without life-altering decisions needing to be made. At the request of Dr House, I had sent the podcast that I hadn't released publicly yet. They had gone up to last Sunday. I know my voice was hoarse from screaming, fuck Niles into the English countryside. I recorded episodes 9 and 10 together before I forgot what happened. I just needed something to take my mind off the flight the next day and the fact that I was still in a world without Niles. I hesitated whether to send it as part of the package. A lot of that therapy stuff was intense. But I think he ought to know. Ooh, what a good title for a song. I didn't know if he would listen to them all at once. Something told me he would. If we were supposed to be so well matched, then... I know what I would do. My phone rang just after midnight and I answered it almost immediately. That was tough. Niles went straight in without preamble. No highs or how are yous. You hate me? It would have been a good way to prevent a difficult conversation. No, I love you more if possible and I could barely breathe. But you also annoy the fuck out of me sometimes. And I considered that maybe we were on the same level. I guess you have questions. Can I see you now? Niles asked. No, because it's late and I'm not sober. Would it get hot and heavy fast? Incredibly, and it would undo all the good work we've been doing. He let out a long breath. Can I see you tomorrow then? Yeah, you can. Are you in bed? I'm up for that. No, you idiot, just get into bed. I'll talk you to sleep. I could hear him walking around, switches being turned, and then a bounce as he breathlessly jumped into bed and announced he was ready. I put my voice down to a whisper, and I told him about what happened when I thought I was dying of Covid on the settee in my house in Cardiff, and how I felt my grandmother near me, how she held my hand and told me that I would be okay. Is this the ghost story? Niles mumbled. I made this shush sound. I could hear his breathing slowing down, so I continued. My nan said that people would come into my life and they would be good for me. I now think she was talking about him and Amy. I'm not sure if he was listening by that stage, but I told him that he had done a horrible thing to me. But... He'd still been kinder to me than every other man I have ever spent time with. When I was absolutely sure he was asleep, I told him that I forgave him. What I wasn't expecting was for Niles to be in the kitchen when I got up the next morning. I was showered and dressed, so at least there was that. He and Amy were standing chatting as she arranged breakfast, which was scrambled eggs. 
Kathy? Amy asked as I went in. No thanks, I replied and went into the fridge to get some apple juice. Who are you and what have you done with Jess? Niles joked. Jess has changed, I told him as he got me a glass for my drink. But you'll have eggs? Amy yelled and I confirmed I would love some. Nell said you got him off last night. To sleep. I quickly countered to Amy and Niles gave a look. I said to sleep, don't listen to my sister. It was a kind act. And how do I come off in the podcasts? Amy asked. You're not in the mains, not mentioned at all. Niles said but looked at me. Amy picked up a tea towel and thwacked her brother with it. You're such a liar. They were starting on each other, so I picked up my drink and started sipping it out of their way. Niles looked concerned. Are you okay? You said we were seeing each other today. It's your sister's place. You can come round whenever. Not true, Amy shouted, and the toaster suddenly popped with fresh toast. Could I give you a hand with that? I asked, but Amy gestured for me to leave it. I wonder if you'd like to go for a walk in the park, Niles asked, and I nodded in reply. I'll come, Amy said. No, you won't, Niles replied. Rude, Amy pouted. I want to hear that ghost story again, Niles said, and Amy's face lit up. Although Niles had heard it on their podcast, and part of it last night, over scrambled eggs and toast, which by the way were delicious, I repeated the story. The one I was too scared to tell anyone? Now I'm telling it to the two people I think it's about. I don't think it's ridiculous. I would have never called you that, Niles declared. Mainly because I think that's the first time I've ever said that word. Also, you hallucinated it, Jess. Amy punched a brother in the arm. You don't know that. It's perfectly understandable. When you're in a state, your mind will do anything to take the pain away. Maybe I'm hallucinating this then, I said before taking a huge mouthful of food. Amy grinned smugly at a brother, who did the same back to her. It's not unreasonable, Niles finally said. This from a man who believes in a god, I countered. Excellent point, Amy added. I took a sip of apple juice to clear my mouth. I can believe one of two things. One, I did hallucinate it. It was a coping strategy to deal with the illness. Or two, my late grandmother held my hand and guided me through one of the worst moments of my life, gave me hope. Then she searched the world to find people suitable for me and then moved every circumstance so we would meet, even though the chances of that happening was effectively zero. But you're the romantic, Niles, probably just a hallucination. Niles stared open-mouthed at me. It was Amy who spoke first. I think there are things we don't know or understand in this world. I nodded, which is why she said people, not person Amy. Amy's face broke out into a huge smile. I know where I believe. Amy picked up a plate and left us. Niles was still staring. Yeah, hallucination, I know. I picked up my plate and stood up to follow Amy. Niles took the plate from me in what I thought was a move to take it away from me. Instead, he put it back down on the table and pulled me in for a hug. It was so lovely and I could have stood there all day. Within seconds, though, he reached down and kissed my forehead. It was your grandmother, he whispered and then let me go. Patronising prick. Amy had a lunch date anyway, so she was never going on the walk with us. We walked out into the park, and I was strangely left alone by the people demanding I take a horse ride around the park 
to see the famous fountain at the beginning of France. It's not there. It was not even filmed in New York. We started with pleasantries. It was a nice day. The weather was getting better. Still a bit of a chill in the air, but summer was on its way. I knew he was dying to ask me about the podcasts and what I'd said, but he was brought up properly and we had all day. It was not even a question in my mind whether I wanted to spend the day with him. I did. It was up to him if he did. I was not going to get needy. I still didn't know where this was heading. We had walked past the ice rink and up into the main path before Niles brought it up. He gestured to a bench so we sat down. I could see him trying to gather his thoughts, obviously trying to find a way to best express himself. He finally said, That was a difficult listen. That bad? No, I mean, it wasn't bad. You weren't bad. It was difficult because I don't know how we talk so much and spent so much time together when we were never honest about how we felt. I nodded. He was right. Do you think we rushed it? It was a reasonable question, but like anything in life, there wasn't a straight answer. I think I still would have slept with you on the first night, still would have asked you to stay the next day. I don't regret that, but I regret not being honest with you before you left the first time. I had nothing to lose then. I never had to see you again. I wish I told you before running back to Daphne too. So do I. I said, trying to make it light-hearted, but it wasn't funny. It was ridiculous. We could have swapped numbers then and had a foundation. That communication, or rather a lack of it, just followed us around. I can't stress enough how long we spent talking to each other when we weren't working. We would talk over a meal, talk over a glass of wine. A lot of the time, the TV wasn't even on. We would just talk. We talked about our past, politics, culture, the pandemic and every topic you can think of except how we were feeling right then in the present moment. Niall spoke next. I put you through hell when I left. I nodded but didn't elaborate. You're not normal, Jess. Nobody flies across the Atlantic for normal. You're exceptional. I looked at him intently, desperately trying to see if he meant it. It appeared he did. Exceptional. He continued. Christmas was also particularly hard to listen to. I didn't tell you about the Christmas Eve party because I was dreading it. I'm no good in that situation. The small talk. In business, yes, but not like that. Not you, though. You were a hit. Everyone taken in turns to speak to you because they loved you. You were on fire. Even in that ridiculous jumper, you looked beautiful. I did not, I snapped. You did, and you always do to me. You were the one everyone wanted to spend time with. You were the colour. I was the grey. That's not true, I told him, but he continued. Everyone was utterly charmed and loved you. And I left you to it, not wanting to bring you down to my boring shit level. But you told no one we were a couple, I interjected. I struggled to believe him. Because who would have believed you'd want to be with me? I was blown away by you, again. Then I found out you did all that because you thought I was ashamed to be seen with you. I didn't get it. Until you said what your stepfather said to you. He hadn't taken his eyes off me once during the whole explanation, confession. I don't know what that was. I didn't know you felt like that. Why didn't you say that night? I was Desperate to spend more time with you. Say what, Jess? 
How'd you put up with a boring man? You are not boring. Far fucking from it. I could listen to you for hours, and I did, and never once was I bored, and I have a seriously low boredom threshold. How could you think that? Makes you think I have a better time with my inner critic than you. I felt a little ashamed that it never occurred to me. You just always seem so confident, in control. I wish I knew was the best I could come up with. Most of the time, I don't tell you things because I'm afraid of losing you. I went to tell him that was worse, but he continued. I know, it has the opposite effect. Let's call it the Niles Paradox. I thought Christmas Day was perfect. It sounded like a nightmare for you. I grinned. It wasn't. For the most part, I loved it. I just think if you told me how you felt. He went to talk, but I carried on talking. Yes, and if I told you how I felt, then it could have been avoided. I'm beginning to think we're both idiots. Oh, I've known that from the beginning. He grinned and the conversation stopped, both lost in our thoughts. Mine being, if we ever got back together, would this still happen? My next thought I blurted out before I had time to articulate it. Why did you jump to marriage? Apart from wanting to spend the rest of my life with you? Nal said without any hesitation. I nodded coolly, but I could feel goosebumps rising. I kept asking you what you were going to do when your work contract ended, and you kept changing the conversation. I wanted you to come here. I didn't know. You should have just been straight with me. Honestly, Jess? After everything, you still didn't get how I felt? After everything, how did you not know how I felt? Did I mention our problems with my inner critic? He admitted. Sometimes I think we're so alike. Niles smiled. I'm glad you're finally seeing it. I gave him a deathly stare and he nudged me. Long term though. He said, I thought marriage would be a way for you to stay here with me, for immigration purposes. It was just when you snapped about marriage and, well, you know the rest, and I'm not proud of myself. I hadn't even considered that because I hadn't considered that Niles would want me here full time. I looped my arm around his arm and kissed his shoulder. It felt a natural thing to comfort him. We were still for a long time before he spoke again. Did Amy tell you we're going to Mom's tomorrow? Rose is coming. I nodded. Naz had been clear about me not meeting his daughter yet. Now we weren't seeing each other, it seemed obvious I was on my own tomorrow. Not a bad thing. I'd like you to come, he said in all earnest, and I failed to hide my surprise. He continued. I know what I said, and I was wrong. I'd like you to at least meet. She's fifteen now, old enough to understand, and I think you would be a positive role model for her. I'd like to go then. The day stretched out. We didn't want to walk forever, so we found a coffee shop. It's on two stools in a bar looking into the street. I got the highlights and lowlights of my podcast from his viewpoint. The highlights were that I obviously loved being with him, that I spoke so highly of him, never once called him dull, and had no intention of finishing it. Yes, all the bits about him, but in fairness, this was the reason I'd listen to the podcasts. The lowlights were every time I felt not enough for him, him leaving, parts of Christmas and New Year, and then there was one that came out of left field. When I said it was love at first sight with Amy. When he told me he was scared he was going to lose me to his sister, he was serious. I had to remind him that although Amy didn't consider gender an issue when it came to dating, I had only ever been attracted to men. I also had a strong attraction to one when I met Amy. He lent into me. 
Do you still feel like that? He asked, and he held his breath. I nodded, and it took all my willpower not to push my lips on his hard. He let out a long breath, and I felt the heat from it. I closed my eyes to take it in. He moved closer to me, and his lips were dangerously close to my face. Then, the second I thought he was going to kiss me, he moved his head so his mouth was close to my ear. I love you so much, Jess, he whispered. Then, what seemed like a second later, he was up. I opened my eyes and he pulled me up to stand in. It was disorientating and confusing. Let's go for pizza, Niles announced, as if the last minute hadn't happened. Over pizza, he filled me in on the time between breaking up and then seeing him again. He had shut down, told work he was sick and sent a few notes, told his cleaner and laundry agency that he wasn't to be disturbed. Still paying them because he's not a dick, and shut himself in the apartment. Day and night had no meaning to him. For days he told himself that he'd done the right thing in the long term. I would be fine because I was used to being single and I'd just move on. He was the one that was struggling. After playing our last conversation on a loop, he changed his mind. He realised he'd made a massive mistake because he wouldn't get over me. He worked through every scenario to beg to have me back. Like me using his clothes to pretend he was still there. He was using the unofficial podcast I sent him to pretend I was still there. He had made the decision that, if there was no future, we could still have a present. Would fly to see me whenever I wanted. Went to ring me so many times with this deal, but never went through with it. He wouldn't speak to anyone, and if Amy didn't have keys to the apartment, he may still be like that. Amy wasn't a sympathetic, called him an asshole. He told her to fuck off. She didn't. It explains why Amy got in touch with me. Amy's a force to be reckoned with, I responded after his sad tale. Of, let's be fair, his own doing. She knows me better than I know myself. Then when you came to the apartment, you came to give me shit. But you hesitated. Yeah. That empathy thing sucks, I told him. And I knew there was a chance you'd forgive me. You still being here means there's a chance of a future on any level you are comfortable with. I didn't know how to respond, and I didn't need to. The waiter interrupted, took our plates away, and presented us with the bill. That was it then. I would have to go back to Amy's and make that decision. We'd been out for hours, except I didn't want to leave him. Come back to my apartment, Niles asked, then responded quickly with, just to hang out, watch TV. I wasn't sure. I was desperate to, but I still have six more episodes of Frasier I've been waiting to watch with you. Well, I wasn't turning that down. I still wouldn't drink. He offered me wine, but I needed a clear head. I needed to know that every part of what was happening was my cool-headed decision and not based on how I felt. Okay, it was of course based on how I felt, but recognising that the two had to be in play was important. I sipped sparkling mineral water with a slice of lemon while he drank some expensive coffee. I told him he could have wine and I would taxi back to Amy's, but he was adamant that he would drive me. We planned with Amy that I was to drive with her to the parents the next day and Niles would drive up with Rose. It wouldn't be a late night. I made him shush as we watched the final episodes of Frasier. Spoilers coming up for a series that finished 19 years ago. We watched as Frasier fell in love with Charlotte, but she was already with someone. That felt familiar. 
Charlotte did become single, but has an offer she can't refuse to work in Chicago and left anyway. Martin had a bachelor party and got married. Frasier got sentimental about an earthenware croc, which my Niles found hilarious, but only because the cast were wearing wigs. The programme Daphne and Niles had a kid at the vets. Finally, Frasier was offered a new job in another city and saw it as an opportunity to start afresh, like he did when he arrived from Boston all those years ago. He packed up his apartment, said goodbye to his friends and family and boarded a plane for what we think is San Fran. Instead, we found out he was really heading to Chicago to take a chance on making it work with Charlotte. When it finished and Fraser said, Good night, Seattle, for the last time. It felt oddly surreal. Watching this show with his 264 episodes, I've just checked, had been a part of our relationship since the beginning, and now it was over. Niall switched the television off and turned to me. I was Fraser, not Niles. I was curious to know his thinking, so requested he explain. I boarded the plane to take a chance on making it work with the woman I loved. Are you talking about me? I said playfully. I knew what he was talking about. Well, it happened three times, but you were the latest, he grinned. You're not, Fraser. I assured him. You just went on another business trip. He looked put out, so I carried on. I'm Fraser because it's me who's going to give up my apartment and fly to a new city to take a chance on the person I love. I swear the intensity in his eyes made me think I had misread it. I thought he wanted this. I know we haven't said it, but surely then he smiled. That big, beautiful smile I craved. Yep. I've appropriated that word too. Yeah, that's not going to work. You can't be Frasier if I'm Niles. How about... I'll just be Jess. And you can be Andrew. Yes, fuck it, I've said his real name. His name is Andrew. He was kind of annoyed that I used Amy's real name, but it was done with good reasons originally. His family call him Drew, but I call him by his full name because that's the name he gave me when we originally met. I must go back to calling him Niles now, though, because people would have missed this bit and believe I've gone straight from Niles to this Andrew character. That wouldn't look good for me. Back to that intense moment on the sofa then in Niles' apartment. Niles was still recovering from my Fraser comment. Can I just confirm that you're saying you're moving to New York to be with me? I nodded. Oh, good. I nodded again, even though I didn't know that that would be even possible. You know I'm not a complete fan of marriage, but we can do it if it means that I get to be with you. Niles was completely flawed, like he was waiting for a punchline. Uh, are we engaged, Jess? Absolutely not, I said, and his face dropped. I think you should propose because you're the romantic and you'll want to make a big romantic gesture, which means we can do the non-traditional wedding. Something small with your family will be great, and I don't want to argue about this because you've done the big white wedding thing. Oh, and I'm not changing my surname. I want us to have the same surname. We can, if you change your name. Crane Garner or Garner Crane? By the way, it's really not Crane. Details, and I think we should, and he cut me off. And I was expecting it like our first kiss, that instant find in each other's mouths and I went to move. But instead he put his hands on either side of my face and started to stroke my cheeks with his thumbs. Then he placed his forehead against mine. He closed his eyes, so I followed. 
and we stayed in the position for a good few seconds. Are you okay? I asked. More than okay, he said, and slowly and deliberately placed his lips on mine, in what was a sweet and utterly divine second first kiss. That's enough from me this week. Thank you so much for listening. Please come back. I'm not needy or anything, but... Yeah, well, I obviously am. Apologies to everyone featured for not attempting to mimic your accent. Although you really should be thanking me. You can find me on Insta, at Excuse the Jess, and let's do this again soon. Excuse the Jess was written and performed by Jackie J. Sarah. It is a deliciously bright production. If you enjoyed this, please click follow and give us a five-star review or donate via Buy Me A Coffee. All details, including full credits, can be found on the website excusethejess.com. 